My HOA are incompetent scum. My father stalks them until they resign. Take down post to buy a Juriac Hermit. So I live in a relatively new suburban neighborhood with a homeowners association, an HOA, that has been slowly getting more annoying. My father, a paranoid, vengeful Republican retired civil engineer, is the main disperser of the revenge. Here's a list of their earlier offenses. About five years ago, they sent us a notice to move our garbage bins out of the street, and if they were left outside of the backyard after garbage day for too long again, they would fine us. Our garbage bins were not in the street. We were also very good about putting our garbage bins away promptly after they sent us a warning after we left them out during a week-long vacation. They somehow mixed up our house with our neighbors. My dad spray painted our lot number on the bins so that this wouldn't happen again. The rest of the neighborhood slowly followed suit. From what I hear, the security guard the HOA hired is also paid to look for infractions on each lot, but apparently is not paid enough to get the lot numbers right, so this happened several times. The light on our address number hasn't worked since the house was built and we bought immediately after it was finished because the construction job was rather shoddy. Six years later, somebody from the HOA finally noticed and told us that we had to pay to fix it even though it was due to an electrical fault on the part of the builders. They also demanded a picture to prove that we fixed it. My father opened the box where the light was, put a glow stick in, then took a picture at night and then sent it in, the address light seemingly fixed. They bought it. They even tried to force all members of the neighborhood into this poorly designed social network for our neighborhood. Nobody liked it, and the network was barely even used by the HOA. Not announcing HOA meetings except a day or two before the meeting by posting the times on the dilapidated board at the park at the center of the neighborhood. The paper often falls off and blows away, so the meetings were not often attended by anybody until recently because of the big offense that follows. Here's the big one that set my dad off. There is apparently a clause in the HOA guidelines that, every so often, we must have the house repainted. The first time to do this came up last year. There was a lot of crappy bureaucracy involved, like having to submit a request to do the mandated painting. And then the whole neighborhood was mandated to use these expensive, not particularly good paints that couldn't be bought anywhere nearby except from a posh overpriced supplier some 100 miles away. My father, being a cheapskate, said screw that and he got a small time guy, real friendly, to do the job on the cheap and use paints that were one tone off, but were more durable and cheaper because they could be bought in bulk from the big store down the street. He does a great job in just two hot summer days, doing all the work with just him and, I believe, two others, all on the cheap. A few months later, when everybody else was repainting their houses, we get a notice that our house is not painted according to code and submit a new request to repaint our house or face penalties. My dad was steaming because he was pretty sure the only reason they required us to use those colors was because the paint company was paying them to and the house looked great. He endured months of poorly managed bureaucracy. He kept sending the request to repaint the house and they kept playing around, losing the request, not keeping him notified of the matter, delaying the processing until it neared the deadline to paint the house. If we overshot the deadline, we would be fined. He demanded that they just fine him, uh, bribe, for using the wrong paint and not force him to repaint with the overpriced crappy paint. They wanted to make an example of us and have him come before a disciplinary committee, and my father wouldn't let this stand. While they kept playing bureaucratic games, my father started his revenge games. He got somebody in the HOA to tell him where the offices of their management was, and he went there to demand to speak with them, to complain, and ask for information on the proceedings because it was so far out of the way and hard to figure out where it was, and he made such a fuss, they panicked. He went again a week later, and they had beefed up security and denied him entry unless he had an appointment. When he met with the disciplinary committee, there was an armed security guard there. 
My father pulled out all of his know-how as a civil engineer and told them that the paint they were using was subpar, overpriced, and it was clear that they had no experience in the field and needed a consultant. They politely declined his services and tried to get him to pin all the blame on the painter, which he refused to do as he authorized the painter to cheap out on the paint. As punishment, they force us to repaint in a different, much uglier color that's completely out of place for the neighborhood and was apparently designed for a completely different location. We give in, but my father won't let this go without them knowing never to screw with him again. He starts calling and emailing them regularly to demand to know when the next HOA meeting is and berate them for not properly notifying the neighborhood by email or even regular mail and newsletters. Pretty sure this is a violation of their regulations, but they might be just barely fulfilling them with the half-butt posting the day before the meetings mentioned earlier. He then starts attending every meeting and recording them. I join him and I pretend to be unrelated to make it appear that more people were upset with them. Turns out, they've been ticking people off all over the neighborhood, including refusing to let a family dispose of a diseased tree ruining their lot. I don't recall all the details, but I think the tree wasn't actually on their property, but rather an empty lot or a condemned lot next door, but it was damaging their garden and property. Doing nothing to deal with a hornet nest on a block set of mailboxes. The mailboxes are all set up in one conjoined block of boxes that was causing the mail person to refuse to deliver the mail there, causing people to miss bills and important mail forcing at least two other houses who did the same as us to repaint in those crappy colors. My dad met with these people and he gathered their contact info. We had planned to organize with other angry neighbors to stage a coup once elections came around. After the first meeting, my father took the information he'd gathered on the people in charge of the HOA, took to the internet and found much more. The second meeting he goes to, he shows with name placards for all of them so that the neighborhood could know not only their names and positions, they couldn't be bothered to do this themselves, but also their addresses and phone numbers, letting them know he knows who they are and where they live. This on top of his harassment by email and phone and their office to the point that they had hired security guards to protect them from an angry old gun owning man must have been too much for this group of 30-something soccer moms. The next meeting, there's new HOA people. The president, vice president, and half the board have resigned. Turns out, they were all a clique that used the HOA as more of a social club than a serious thing. My father is satisfied, and the new board starts taking action to actually help people in the neighborhood. Commenter says, your dad should start a business called HOA Busters, where he goes to a neighborhood that's being terrorized and gets them to resign or vote out. He could also have people filming him. I would watch that show. This is a three-story saga about a nasty HOA Karen and the drama with OP. Darling Debbie and her spouse. Debbie lived directly behind our house. She lived alone, except when her husband, Fred, came to mow the lawn, do yard work, and get yelled at in the yard in front of the entire neighborhood. There were several occasions that made us more than a little concerned. Whenever Fred came over, the neighbors on the street that she lived on would call all their children into the house. I mean, one minute there would be eight to 10 kids playing and then ghost town. This is because Debbie would go out front to greet Fred in a very bitter manner. The following conversation took place on a beautiful Saturday morning. Fred getting out of his car, hey, Debbie cutting him off. Where the heck have you been? I've been waiting all freaking morning. Uh, but honey, it's only 9 a.m. Debbie cuts him off again. Exactly. You should have been here at 7. Well, I said I'd be here at 9, and I'm freaking here. Shut the heck up. Debbie, throw in the newspaper at Fred. Don't you freaking talk to me like that. I'm your wife. Now get your butt to work. These were their normal conversations. Sometimes they were much worse. Another Saturday morning, we noticed Fred sitting on the patio in a lawn chair. He was visibly ill, his face was beet red, and we were concerned that he was having a heart attack or a stroke. Debbie was not going to allow her husband to sit idle while he still had chores to attend. She berated him mercilessly until he just got up, didn't say one word, and left. He was back about two weeks later. Debbie hired two handymen to enclose the lanai. They put windows up in the peak of the roof and five sets of sliding glass doors all the way around. 
It was so much nicer to look at from a neighbor's perspective. Debbie is somewhat of a hoarder and had so much junk on her lanai, it was so nice once we didn't have to look at things that she picked out of the trash. Not against dumpster diving or upcycling, but she never did anything with the stuff. By far, the most disturbing incident with Debbie and Fred happened on a Saturday. Fred only came to do chores on Saturday, and the rest of the time, he lived in a small apartment alone. After Debbie had had the lanai enclosed, Fred hadn't been over for a few weeks, and he was furious with Debbie when he saw the work that had been done. We couldn't see them since Lynn and I was enclosed and had blinds in between the glass on all the sliding glass doors, but we could hear them. Fred goes, what the heck did you do? I had to get something. I couldn't just look at the neighbor's ugly yard anymore, referring to our yard. You never even asked me. This cost me $15,000. Where am I supposed to get the freaking money? Fred is actually retired. Now, screaming in a language that I don't understand, Debbie goes off. And after what truly sounds like fighting, they come out into the yard. Debbie has collected every piece of wood that the contractors hadn't used and every piece of scrap that they cut and were going to discard. What am I supposed to do? Fred says. I need you to cut all this wood, two by force, so that I can burn it in the fire pit. I didn't know that's what you needed today. I don't have a table saw with me. I'm going to have to come back next weekend to cut this wood. I have a saw you can use. Where'd you get a saw? One of the construction men left it one night and I took it. Debbie goes into the house and comes out with a hand saw. Fred goes, this won't work. It'll take a week to cut all this wood with this little saw. Then we need to get started. Fred tries again to explain why this just won't work, but in the end, he attempts to cut up some of the wood. Now Debbie only has the saw and none of the other equipment needed to safely cut wood, but they attempt to improvise. There is a small concrete bench in the yard. Debbie places a piece of lumber on the bench and stands on the board so that Fred can saw it down to a manageable size for Debbie to burn. This was pretty amusing to watch for a while until Fred just stopped and told Debbie that he can't do this by hand. Debbie insisted he try again, and Fred complied, and while he was sawing, Debbie jumped off the board and it snapped back and hit Fred in the head. Fred's head is now bleeding profusely. Fred goes, what the heck did you do that for? You need to listen to me. When I tell you to do something, you do it. Well, I, I can't work now. I have to go to the hospital. Debbie picks up the board and holds it like a baseball bat. What are you doing now? You can't leave. You're not finished. You can go when all the wood is cut. Fred had enough. Debbie is blocking his path to leave. Fred just backs up and goes around the house to his car. This part was relayed by another neighbor. And as Fred got into his car, Debbie came running from the backyard and hit Fred's car with a two by four. Fred flipped her the one finger salute as he peeled out of the driveway. Debbie never got the wood cut. She attempted to burn the six foot lengths of lumber in her small fire pit until the fire department and police showed up because of the smoke. That's Debbie, demanding Debbie, never liked us. Posted by Snoo Muffins 9396. Backstory, spring 2015 and we were relocating from the east coast to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. We were moving into a hot market and houses were getting 12 to 20 offers each. Super stressful for buyers. We had looked at dozens of houses in the area and we were outbid on all of our offers. My husband decided that we needed to up our price to find something decent. We asked our agent to show us something in a beautiful neighborhood within our new price point. We walk into a beautiful home. The kitchen was almost perfect. It was a designer spec home, meaning the builder built the home without a specified buyer in hand to finish the block and move to the next section of the subdivision. The designer who chose the finishes really did a phenomenal job. The house had nearly $150,000 and more in upgrades. In our initial walk around the property, we see a lady, Debbie the Karen, come out of the house behind us and just stare. I waved at her because I wanted to make a good impression on our possible neighbor, but she just stared at us. We exit the front door and go back to the sales office with the keys to speak with the salespeople. They were super helpful, and I mean really, really helpful. They explained that the house had been completed almost six months earlier, and they haven't had any legitimate offers that the builder would accept. They gave my husband the breakdown of all the upgrades and what the house was initially listed at, and each price reduction and date. We asked about the lady behind the house, and they all rolled their eyes and laughed. 
said she was harmless but a major pain in the behind. As we left, the salesman told us what the last offer was on the house and said to just go a little above it and we would be fine. We went to lunch with our agent to look over everything about the house and we loved it and decided to make an offer. Our offer was accepted and we got a great deal. From the initial listing price to our offer, we saved over 175 grand. Now, it should have been a huge red flag that they were willing to let this property go at that price. After we move in, we meet the neighbors next door, Jim and Amanda, and they are lovely people. But we only see Debbie come out to stare at us in our house. Jim and Amanda tell us that Debbie was one of the original homeowners in the subdivision, and they were too, and that Debbie has scared away countless potential buyers for our house and the house next door by staring and making people uncomfortable. Everyone else we met was very welcoming. Things with Debbie started slow at first. We needed to put up a fence for our dogs. We had approval from the HOA, and the day that our contractor arrived to start installing fence posts, Debbie lost her ever-loving mind. HOA rules stated that the fence must be put right on the property line and that we had to install a four foot high split rail fence with hog wire for the dogs, not a privacy fence. That is exactly what we were putting up. Debbie tried claiming that we were trying to put our fence on her property and she was calling the police. The police show up with sirens and lights and the whole show. She called 911 and Debbie is screaming that the fence installers were threatening to kill her. The contractor and I are just standing on my deck trying not to laugh. She said we were calling her really offensive names, we weren't, and that we were trespassing in her yard. The officer asked Debbie to point out who said what, and she proceeds to point at three of the fence installers. The second officer approaches us to get our side, and the contractor shows that we have HOA approval and the survey showing all property lines, and tells him that the three men she is accusing of harassment speak limited English. So no way they've said anything to her. Then Debbie doubles down with the trespassing and trying to say that we were putting our fence on her property. The officers ask to see the property pins and my contractor tells them that Debbie pulled them up herself as soon as she saw where the fence would be constructed. The officer found the pins in Debbie's yard. Turns out Debbie had been encroaching onto our property for years. Her house was built about seven years before ours, and she had been planting about six feet past the property lines. We got our fence installed about four inches shy of the property line, and Debbie received a warning for pulling property pins. Now as a side note, this is obviously a well-to-do neighborhood with many houses in excess of $2 million, and Debbie used empty beer bottles buried neck down as her border for various planting beds. She did this to keep the water out. When the fence was complete and I had the task to remove all the beer bottles, Debbie watched me the whole time, I asked her if she wanted them back, and she never answered, demanding Debbie does laundry. Debbie was the neighbor directly behind our property. Our HOA didn't allow us to put up any kind of permanent clothesline, temporary lines were okay, and this did not deter Debbie. Every week, year round, Debbie would wash her clothes in a very large stock pot on a hot plate on her covered lanai. Think Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. She also did all of her cooking outside on the hot plate. And then hang them to dry on her outdoor furniture, draped over bushes and even on our fence. My poor husband would get too embarrassed to ask her to please stop hanging her underwear and bras on our fence. So I had to approach her. I asked her to please hang her things somewhere else because I was worried that our dogs might pull them off the fence and damage her clothing. Debbie looked at me incredulously and said that she could use her side of the fence any way she liked. We don't want to get our neighbors in trouble with the HOA, but this lady was purposely pushing all our buttons. We took a few photos of her laundry and contacted the HOA to ask if anything can be done. When they asked for the address and the name of the resident, the HOA rep just sighed. Apparently, they had been dealing with Debbie for a long time. They said they would contact her and for us to let them know if she does anything to retaliate. The HOA contacted us about two weeks later and informed us that if she hangs anything on our fence again that we could do whatever we wanted with the items. Debbie hung her laundry on our fence a few weeks later and after she went back into her house I walked into my yard with my dogs and I grabbed one item and I went back into my home. I did this every time she hung something on our fence. Debbie never questioned me about it. Neighbors told me that she believed that there was some kind of underwear thief roaming the neighborhood and to be on the lookout. Now I didn't touch her clothing with my bare hands and I only handled it with a glove. 
I put all of her clothing in a box in our garage in case she ever asked me. I put the full box, a large shoe box with about seven items, on her side of the fence about a week before we moved away. And FYI, the HOA was extremely reasonable. They would send letters and rarely ever find residents. Debbie had called the police for the most mundane things and I didn't want to get her in any kind of legal trouble and I also don't like bothering the authorities with this kind of petty stuff. The name demanding Debbie is only used as an alliteration. Her name isn't Debbie, but she would often make ridiculous demands on the neighbors. Debbie Downer's a Karen. Have you ever had to deal with somebody like this? Holy cow, man. Neighbor and HOA harassment posted by Sean B for Life. My co-worker's neighbor behind him has been reporting him to their HOA for months now, getting them fined for literally nothing. The latest issue was having a fire pit on the back porch. The bylaw mentions you can't have an open fire or have fire pits in use, but grills are allowed. But the issue here is that the fire pit is not in use. Also, the picture presented to show the fireplace on the back porch comes from that neighbor's security camera that is directly pointed at his house. The entire view of the camera is all of only his property and nothing else. The houses are separated by a drivable alleyway too. This neighbor spies on him regularly. He sees him looking out at them all the time, day and night. And also, he trespasses on people's property to find reasons to report them. I told him to fight it because he's spying, privacy breaching, and the bylaw doesn't say that you can't own one or have one out, and harassment. Any other advice? A question and update from OP. Has he got children and have them out playing in the rear yard when he uses a grill? Then lay a charge of the neighbor creating inappropriate videos. OP replies, my coworker is in college renting the house with seven other people. They all stay inside mostly and are quiet from the info that I'm given. This entire neighborhood is right next to their college. The position of the camera gathered from the photo evidence of breaking the bylaw has direct view of the back door. So every time it opens, you can see inside the entirety of the camera view and from all shows only the upper half of my coworker's backyard along with his entire house. It does not show the alley street in between their houses or the owner of the camera's backyard. Are these normal houses in a suburb? Or are the HOA's gated communities with townhouses or something, someone asked. And OP replied, it's a three street subdivision in a larger neighborhood. It's not gated. Wow, they seem incredibly intrusive for just a small house in a suburb. I get condos with shared common property needing them. They're seen as the downside of owning a condo and apartment here. Maybe because housing estates in the U.S. have to maintain stuff that is maintained by the local council in other countries. The final update. So far now, he has been charged with the following. Having a fire pit in view on the back porch. The bylaw states it can't be lit that close to the house. And we're fined for it being lit, which it wasn't, and without evidence. Having a hammock drilled into the tree in their backyard, but it was one of those wraparound tension ones. This had something to do about the destruction of the landscape. Continuous complaints about different cars parked in the driveway. I don't know how this is even a thing, but when you have seven college students renting a house, it should be expected. Continuous noise complaints. Their neighbors on both sides throw parties all the time, so the HOA groups them all together. And the most recent was a fine for having the grill on the front porch. It was never on the front porch. I helped them move in and I took it straight to the back porch. It's too big and too heavy to just move to their tiny front porch. All of this is without any proof and most of these fines are from bylaws that don't exist or what they wish they wrote in but didn't. As in, they have no grounds for these fines. All of them have been 50 to 100 bucks which they have refused to pay and are usually dropped. The latest one with the grill was $750. Pretty steep in my eyes for an HOA fine. They even mentioned in their emails about the fire pit that the grill is the only thing allowed on the back porch and it never left the back porch. It is clear they're being targets by the HOA and their rear neighbor. Their landlord at this point is tired of the complaints and wants them all out. This feels like a group thing, like they're all in on it. 
I told him to take legal action. Is there any legal action to take? Any ground to stand on? I know HOAs can pretty much do what they want sometimes. This story has multiple updates and gets crazier as we go. Sold land around my house to a developer years ago. The HOA formed and I'm being forced to join it and liens are put on my property. So my parents owned about 30 acres of land in the middle of nowhere Nebraska on the outskirts of town. My parents built their house in the late 80s and that's where I've lived my whole life. My parents passed away and I inherited the property and it's all my land or was my land. Back in 2005, this developer bought up a bunch of neighboring land and wanted to buy my land. I told him that I was willing to sell 10 acres furthest from the house, the adjoining section to his neighborhood. He asked for 20 acres and I told him that the second 10 acres would be triple the price and he agreed and we signed the paperwork and he bought the land and I was paid for it. End of story or so I thought. The land sat empty for over a decade since it took a while for him to sell the plots of land that he made to home buyers and his company built houses. From about 2005 to 2012, the land sat empty and I didn't mind. I still mowed the grass and whatnot to keep it tidy but never tried to take the land over or anything. By fall of last year, he had finished the entire area and there's about 200 homes in that neighborhood. Because of the neighborhood, my 10 acres is now worth about 10 to 20 what it was originally worth, and the HOA knows that. Since September of 2017, I've had a bunch of angry letters and citations left on my property and in my mailbox. Some of them include having a barn larger than 7x7 seven seven feet, I have a 20x40, having abandoned vehicles on my property. It's a project car shell that I'm working on. I have the actual chassis in the barn, but it needs quite a bit of work. I bought an old rusted body and it sits outside and will continue to do so until I can deal with it. Having a non-conforming mailbox, still no idea what the heck this is. And then having improper roof tiles, again, no idea. I ignored them and told the HOA members that I'm not part of their neighborhood and therefore have no reason to follow their bullcrap rules. The HOA says, since my property values have gone up, I owe back dues from the date that I sold my land, before there was even a single house built, and have to correct everything on the list. The back dues are currently $10,200, but they state that if I don't pay by December 31st, 2017, I'll be charged interest that has accrued. Again, no idea where they're getting the interest from, but I believe their HOA fees are around $750 a year. It'll cost me about 15 to 20 grand to fix my house. I think it's absolute bullcrap that they can even make me try to do so. I went through all the documents I signed, and not a single document from the developer makes any mention of an HOA or my association with it, and I have no idea why the HOA is coming after me. I live almost a half a mile away from the nearest house that belongs to the neighborhood. The entire neighborhood has its own little custom street signs and lamps. I don't have any of that, so how can they say I'm part of the HOA? They said to either pay up or they'll put a lien on my property and take it over. From what I understand, if I pay the 10 grand, doesn't that mean I've been admitting to guilt and be forced into the HOA? An update. So, I just had an hour long discussion with the lawyer and he went through all the documents. He asked if I was sure that was every document and I told him it was. And it was. When I sold all the documents, I put them all in the same folder along with my taxes. He says that there is no chance I'm in the HOA since I didn't sign anything. He let me know that he'd be glad to send them a cease and desist letter to the HOA. I brought up adverse possession and he suggested I don't pursue it since I want them to leave me alone rather than instigate anything bigger. So for now, he said to not pay anyone or sign anything. He'll mail out the cease and desist letter today and he says if the HOA tries contacting me, I should just tell them to contact him instead. So I think I'm in the clear for now. Next update. So I met with the real estate attorney that was referred to me by a Redditor on here I did the title search and I'm in the process of trying to find the old developer's master plans. So far, here's what's been dug up. I sold my land to developer A. He owned the land for about two years and then filed bankruptcy and lost the land to the bank. That's when the maintenance of the land went to crap and I was mowing it and taking care of it cause the bank didn't care. 
the bank sold it to developer B, and that's the person that built the current neighborhood. We got in touch with developer B, and he said that he was no longer part of the neighborhood, and, in fact, the HOA is in charge of the entire area. His company just owned the lots, and they sold and built on them for the families, and they have zero say anymore. I asked him about the master plans and if he thought that he owned my remaining 10 acres, and he said, well, absolutely not. The entire neighborhood sits on old land and the 20 acres that were purchased from in it. So he was helpful and it was clear that he had no wrongdoing. I spoke to the lawyer to see if we could file an adverse possession on the land that I maintain, but he said it would be a waste of time and money, but I was just going to do it despite the HOA. The title search and everything came up clean. It showed my parents as the previous owners and then me, so there's no way they could have owned my land. The records go way back and there is a clear chain of ownership, as my lawyer put it, and it's incontestable. We sent the HOA a cease and desist letter as well as to stop contacting me unless they have actual signed documents that show that I was part of an HOA. They never got back to me. I was out of town and came back later last night to my mailbox missing. It was cut clear off the post with a chainsaw, a wooden post with a metal mailbox on top. I told my lawyer this, and he says that it's a big deal and that USPS would send the person to jail. I repurchased an identical mailbox and set up cameras all over the property. If they try it again, I'll have them on tape. But the biggest thing we uncovered was that we found out what they are planning. Turns out that the HOA wants to put in another community playground and a pool and clubhouse, and they need some land. They can't expand in any other direction since they're almost on the end of a highway on one side and the other sides are zoned for agriculture. They decided they'd try to take over my land. They have yet to also file a lien on my property, so I'm guessing that they were trying to force me into the HOA to make them sell my land below market value. Either way, they showed their hand, and now I'm on alert. We filed a complaint with the police regarding the stolen mailbox, and we have a paper trail for that now. It's just a waiting game to see what they do next, I guess. Should I send them a letter saying that I know their plan and there's no way they can get my land? They have their monthly meeting every second Tuesday of the month, so it's in a few days, and I'm sure I'll be the topic of discussion. Should I go to it? So this is part three and most likely the final update for now. So I was away for the holidays and I came back on Monday to find that my project car was towed out of my driveway. My pond was emptied out and filled with gravel and sand and a fenced off two acres, two chains by one furlong, of my property closest to the HOA. I immediately called the police and filed a report regarding the stolen property. The car wasn't registered and was just an empty shell, so I have no idea where it is, nor will be easy to track. It's not worth a lot, maybe 2500 bucks but it's just a principle of that jerk president of the HOA. I had my lawyer draft up the cease and desist and sent it nearly two weeks ago, and they haven't contacted me in any way except this. I hired a local salvage company to come tear up the fence this weekend, and they're doing it free of charge since I'm letting them keep the fence to sell as scrap metal or whatever else they do with it. My lawyer suggested that I send up a letter demanding payment to fix my pond as it was filled in with gravel and sand. A local landscape company quoted nearly $8,000 to me to get the pond back to the way it was, so that's what he suggested I ask for, and another two grand for loss of use of the pond. The HOA has lawyered up, so I think it's best that I no longer post anything on here until it's settled. Do you think this is just abuse of power, or what do you think is going on here? I think they're trying to take advantage of him, hoping he's going to give in. What do you think? HOA harassment posted by Aliens Talk To Me. I own a rental property. It's a second floor condo. Every so often, the neighbor below claims that I have a leak and he wants his plumber to repair my unit for free. Ha, <laughs> no. I have a service plan with the highest rating plumbing company in our area. Each time they inspect my unit for leaks to repair and no leaks are found. At first, I did not submit the paperwork to the HOA and then the neighbor began forcing his way into the unit and showing up with a gang of men or board members. I present the paperwork and they still declare my unit is leaking. Now I send all the paperwork online. They still say my unit is leaking and I just need to let the neighbor's plumber in to make free repairs. 
Now I have to threaten to call the police and have them arrested for trespassing and harassment. The HOA members in the email threaten to assist the neighbor below with pressing charges against me after they have inspection paperwork from the highest rated plumber in our area. The neighbor below has made all his plumbing repairs in his unit with his repairman and would have been unable to make any plumbing repairs upstairs. There is no documentation or inspection of his repairs. What are my legal options against the HOA for encouraging my neighbor's behavior? My current plumber currently has 19,417 reviews on Google and is rated at 4.9. I have multiple rental properties and each rep they send is amazing and professional and that's why I continue to pay for their service plan. This comment says, perhaps the leak is in between the units. That may fall under the HOA's purview. OP says, I agree with you, but the neighbor downstairs allows his plumber to make undocumented and uninspected repairs, and the HOA is not being held accountable, and the HOA has never paid the neighbor for his repairs. I refuse to go along with it. I'm no lawyer, OP, and that's exactly why I'd get one to stand my ground against the HOA. Our HOA has been taken over by a rental company, posted by 3Cat Mafia. Our neighborhood in upstate South Carolina began construction in early 2020. We purchased our home in 2021 and moved in shortly thereafter when construction on our home was finally complete. We aren't completely satisfied with our house, but we got a low rate and for a starter home, it isn't awful. The houses are close together, as is common for a new neighborhood these days, and construction was still ongoing for the rest of the neighborhood. We were told there would be about 120 houses total. About halfway into our time there, we received notice from the builder that the homes would no longer be property of the builder and that they would be turned over to a rental company and would no longer be for sale, but for rent instead. So there are about 40 or so homes that have been sold and the rest are rental homes. There were many questions at that time what that meant for us as homeowners, but we were assured that there would be no issues with the rental properties or the company at all and that everything would be kept separate. Within the last two months, the rental company began to stage a takeover of the HOA without informing homeowners. One very involved homeowner caught wind and demanded a meeting. We have no official HOA board, which is kind of nice because we have no busybody HOA, no strong rules and whatnot. And a meeting took place last night. I was unable to attend, but apparently the rental company representatives did not show up. But since they have majority stake in the neighborhood, they automatically are able to take over the HOA. So every rule they apply to the rental properties in the neighborhood now apply to all of the owned properties in the neighborhood as well. So far, we are unsure what this means. Lawyers are being contacted. If I had known this was ever going to happen, I would not have bought here. It feels like a bait and switch. I was fine without almost absent HOA previously. I don't want to be subject to rental rules when I'm not even a renter. Oh my goodness, straight up your answer here is lawyer up. I mean, they are going way above where they should be. And this is something that's above your pay grade to be able to tackle by yourself. Let me know what you think. My at the time girlfriend, now wife, rented a townhouse with friends in a community that had an HOA. There was parking reserved for guests of the tenants. Ironically, parking was always an issue for my wife and her roommates, but always simple for me. I just popped on the visitor's pass and I was good to go in that lot. I spent the night probably once or twice a week and one day I awoke to find my car missing. After some ace detective work, I found out that my 10 year old at the time, five speed manual transition Honda had not been stolen, but just towed. When I reached out to the HOA, they told me that there was a provision in the bylaws that said a car could only be parked in a visitor spot for a maximum of 72 hours and that a board member submitted my car to a list of cars to be towed due to abusing a visitor's pass. They argued the language in the bylaws was such that the total amount of time that a car may be parked in the visitor's lot was 72 hours non-consecutively. For example, if you park there once a week for 10 hours each week, on the eighth week we are in violation of the policy. This in opposition to the clear purpose of the provision, which is to prevent people from storing their cars in the lot. They summarily denied my request at the next HOA meeting to recover the $150 towing fee. 
Long story short, I sued them in small claims court and got back the towing fee plus court cost. Plus, they engaged a lawyer, so I feel good about wasting some of their retainer as well. Deleted says, We live in a condo and began receiving $100 fines for not picking up dog poop. The area behind our building is a common area and lots of people walk their dogs around. I offered to submit DNA testing for my dogs and they ignored me and continued to send notices of fines. I began taking my phone with me on every walk and took photos and videos of me picking up dung with timestamp evidence. I sent a folder full of photos to the HOA with photographic evidence that I was picking up after my dogs. We continued to receive fines. I got a small trash can and kept on my patio and I began saving my bags of dog crap for two weeks. I did tie the bags but they were still obviously smelly as dung bags are very thin plastic. I then mailed a box of them to the HOA office along with copies of time stamped photos showing I had picked it up. I told them that I had better not ever receive another fine for dog crap because I had provided more than sufficient evidence that it was not us. Miraculously, the fine stopped and we haven't received any for over two years. Debaser626 says, I rented a house in an HOA. It wasn't too bad, just normal stuff, but every now and then some board members would tool around and hand out fines for dirty driveways and such. I wouldn't have cared if the president and a board member didn't live on the same street as me and their driveways were in massive disrepair. The board member's son did some work on his truck and there was a massive oil spill, partly covered with a red towel that sat there for eight months, while a few rust-colored streaks on our concrete was worthy of a fine. The funniest was when the HOA decided to install very aggressive speed bumps. The ones that were there previously were fine. They were graded to not be too jarring but required that you slow down. The only accident that occurred while we were there was the spouse of an HOA board member driving drunk and plowing into a tree. But there were always notices and mailings for people to slow down as this is not a racetrack. I guess they felt adding in a couple of literal asphalt curbs in the middle of the street would show people who dared to drive over 10 miles per hour on the main road. The only way over these things without feeling like you were going to break something on your car was to ease up on the first side, come to a complete stop then, and then slowly ease down the drop, once the front wheels, and then another for the rear. Some people had just taken to driving on the grass around them, so they put up concrete barriers there. After a few weeks, someone decided to pour diesel fuel on the speed bumps the day before the garbage truck did their rounds. The speed bumps got completely destroyed. The HOA reinstalled the bumps and somehow made them even more aggressive and a week later Captain Diesel struck again. They yanked them out again and just paved over the holes. It was beautiful. They did end up installing speed bumps a few months later but they went with the stock plastic ones that bolt to the street which was much more preferable to the man-made cliffs of Dover that were there previously. Nygunk says, I would sit in my yard with my dog between 4 and 6 p.m. every Friday for three months. Why? Because the HOA would measure my grass every freaking Friday. My lawn guy was the best and I refused to switch. However, he can only come on Saturday. The HOA let us choose which day we inspected and everyone voted for Saturdays. They secretly vetoed it for Fridays, but claimed it was Saturday that they were coming. To prove this, I sat with my dog every Friday waiting for him. He would park, wait a while, and then go to another street and measure there. My street was the only one who didn't receive fines for breaking the agreement. It became a party when everyone figured out what I was doing. People would cook out in the front and we would all go throw coals on and food as needed. I got reported for something or other after the three month marker so I brought my supercut three months of time stamped videos and submitted them to the HOA distribution list before I went to meet with them. There were 40 or 50 people there because we had organized a day to go and air grievances. It was maybe the best time I ever spent with any HOA. Gimp2x says, 
Upscale Beach neighborhood repeatedly refused my solar panel application, cited the location of them as being an eyesore, which was atop of the back side of my house, not visible from the street, and fought me at four different meetings, delaying my installation, ultimately cited the state law, and they immediately backed down and amended their covenants. P.S. A clothesline is a solar collection device, and they cannot deny you use of that either. So, if you want to play dirty, hang a bunch of beach towels in your yard. OP's mom and dad say, I lived in a neighborhood with a park in the center, located directly behind my back fence. The entire neighborhood was managed by the same HOA company, but the neighborhood was officially set up as two different HOA communities. Even though it was on the other side of my fence, the park was designated as part of the community that I was not in. On multiple occasions, the irrigation system in the park broke and completely flooded my backyard. Three or four times over a span of a few months, I woke up to literally a foot and a half of water. Over time, my brick fire pit literally sank into the ground, an entire layer of brick. Water came into my kitchen on two of the occasions and every time my home's foundation looked weaker and weaker after cleanup. I called to complain to the HOA each time. The flooding almost always happened on a weekend and it wouldn't be until Monday that they came out, leaving my home flooded for a minimum of two days each time. After the third or fourth complaint, I finally reported them to the BBB and the Water Authority and I sent a video to the local news. The next business day, the head of the HOA company called me furious. Despite all the pictures and videos that I'd sent, she said she was convinced I was making it all up. When I pressed her why she thought that, she specifically said it was because the park can't be flooding your house, it's not even part of the same HOA community that you live in. Scott Evil 110 says, We've only been part of an HOA for the last few months, and it's already living up to every stereotype I ever had in my head. They held our once annual meeting with very little notice and like six people showed up. They elected a new association and immediately decided to spend 700 bucks on dog crap receptacles, even though like four people have dogs and the whole neighborhood is on one street. This sparked an incredible amount of drama. One guy on the HOA decided he was going to get super defensive when people started questioning this decision and it quickly devolved into him just taunting people on Facebook because he was on the board and they weren't. And if they didn't like his authority, they should change the bylaws. Then someone left a bunch of dog crap in his driveway. Then he resigned from the HOA. No word on those dog receptacles. This has all happened in the past three days. Important question regarding crazy neighbor posted by I am cherry 37. Hi everyone. I really need some advice for some context. I live in a town home. So my next door neighbor is very close to me and we both share a front yard area, but the entrance is split off. Okay. So recently I had to take action and call the HOA on her because she refused to pick up her dog's poop for about two years now which is extremely ridiculous, and my family had enough of smelling dog crap every time we opened our front door. We tried being nice and communicating with her, but she's crazy. Since then, the HOA has called her and she went crazy. We used to talk to her, but we have cut off communication and she keeps ringing our doorbell at 1.30 a.m. when she is extremely intoxicated. We have a ring doorbell and she swears and leaves inappropriate messages and she's also left me a 20 year old many racist and rude voicemails over the past three days. We don't want her to ring our doorbell anymore so should we go to the police or talk to the HOA again? The man who talked to her told her that we reported her so I'm not sure how helpful the HOA will be. To be honest, I'm glad they told her it was us so she would take it seriously because she thought we were the only ones who would continue taking her crap because everyone in the neighborhood already hates her and have filed complaints to the village because she had the police at her house every week. Any advice would be helpful. I just want peace of mind that she can't ring our doorbell, but it's also hard because it's a no trespassing order allowed when the person lives five feet away from you. Talk to everybody, the HOA, cops, and even a restraining order, even though it is five feet away. Holy cow, I'm sorry, OP. Karen tries to steal my phone, thinking she knows best. Posted by the illegal human. I was comfortably sitting on the bus, enjoying a game on my phone. Being considerate, I always keep my phone on silent, so I wasn't disturbing anyone. 
The bus ride was an hour long, which gave me a great opportunity to have some gaming fun. Suddenly, a Karen I didn't know comes up to me, demanding that I give her my phone. It turns out, she believed it was her responsibility to teach me a lesson about using phones on public transport. She thought taking my phone was a noble mission. She genuinely thought that she was doing me a favor by taking away my source of entertainment. She believed that losing my phone would be beneficial for me in the long run. I calmly try to reason with her, expressing my confusion and explaining that I wasn't causing any harm. However, it becomes clear that she strongly believes in her righteous mission. She genuinely thinks that taking my phone is her way of imparting wisdom and correcting my behavior. And after a couple minutes of arguing, she didn't. She then yells at the bus driver that I stole her phone. The bus driver gets out of his seat and he was believing her. So I told her to take my phone, turn it off and give it to the woman to try to unlock it. She does a random password. It doesn't work. She does a random password again. It doesn't work. And again and again until the phone locks. I tried telling the bus driver that since she doesn't even know the password to her phone, then it's hers. The bus driver was still a bit skeptical, so when the phone unlocked again, I put in my password and got in on one try. And somehow, she doesn't back down and says, So what if I tried to take the phone? It's still very disrespectful to use your phone in public. I was just trying to teach this boy a lesson. I spent 40 minutes waiting for the bus because Canadian Transit is a little piece of crap. And when I sit down, I'm trying to relax by playing some games. This Karen tries to steal my phone. Karen, still in your property, of course. I mean, I play Clash of Clans and Mighty Doom on my phone, and it's just entertainment. I mean, you made videos on it. You know, Karen's got to stop stealing property that's yours thinking it's hers. My landlord lied to the HOA about having renters with an update. My husband, daughter, and I just moved to a nice suburb area of a large city from a town about three hours away. We found our rental house on Zillow and fell in love with it. We arranged a meeting right away with the landlord who was very eager to have us as her tenants. Things were going well until issue number one came up. We have a golden retriever. She said that her last tenant's dog had done a lot of damage to the property and in order to rent to us, she needed a $3,000 refundable pet deposit. After debating on whether we should pay such a large sum, we agreed because we don't have very good credit and we have an eviction from 2015. So the amount paid to the landlord prior to moving in was $2,400 first month's rent, $2,400 deposit, $3,000 pet deposit. That's $7,800 in total. She also required proof of pet vaccination, flea medicine, and renter's insurance prior to moving in. We were aware of the HOA, but the landlord didn't speak much about it, nor was it in the lease. Our assumption was that the HOA fees were handled by the landlord, since they weren't discussed. This is our first time in a neighborhood with an HOA, so we moved into the house on September 30th of this year. Things were going well, until issue number two. I tried to sign up for the trash service today, and I called the local trash company and they informed us that the account was set up through the HOA. The trash company told me to call the HOA to set it up and gave me a phone number to call. I had questions about lawn care and where to pick up our mail anyway, so I called and left a message with the phone number provided where I stated my name, my new address, and the phone number, and then mentioned that I was a new tenant seeking information. The lady at the HOA immediately called our landlord after receiving my message and told her that the HOA prohibits renters and we need to leave immediately. The landlord attempted to lie and say that we are her roommates and that she told us to say the same if they call. That obviously isn't going to work and we are expected to move out right away. We told the landlord that we would leave, but we would need a few days to pack up our stuff and find somewhere else to live. We also told her that we expect a full refund since our contract was signed under false pretenses of no fault of our own. She told us that if we do not move out in 48 hours, that she will be prorating our refund because she shouldn't be expected to pay our bills. My questions are, what options do we have as renters with a 12 month lease? How can we get our money back from the landlord? And can we report the landlord to the HOA for past renters as well and any future ones? Here's the update. We haven't spoken with our landlord since she agreed to give us our money back in full. 
But as someone mentioned, we will try to get that agreement in writing. We found another house already and we plan on moving into the new one tomorrow. We've taken pictures and videos of the house. Since we have only been in the house for five days, everything is in the exact same condition that it was when we moved in. Adventures in Condo HOAs, posted by Gendersnap9210. So, background info. I have just purchased my first piece of real estate, a condo of my very own. It is on the third floor of a fourth floor building with a gorgeous lake view. Another important piece of info is that the previous owner apparently never cleaned. Like, ever. They were the only owner since the condo was built in 2004 and it was absolutely disgusting when I moved in. I'm talking layers of dried on food spills all over the kitchen, used acne patches stuck to the bathroom cabinets and so on. Spent the first month bleaching the entire inside. And that my friends is when we arrive at our main story. As I noted, the gorgeous view was a huge selling point of this particular unit. It has a beautiful deck overlooking a great lake and a pool. However, it was covered in slimy green mold and algae. After I made the inside habitable, I wanted to get the deck in shape for the upcoming warm weather. I checked the rules documents and it said nothing about washing your deck, so I presumed, like at my previous rental condo, that a courtesy heads up to those below you was the MO. I head down to the first floor, I introduce myself to the neighbor two floors below, and I let her know that I'd like to power wash my deck. She tells me to go ahead and do whatever I need to do, just let her know when I settle on an exact day and time. Great! So I head upstairs to the second floor. Enter neighbor Kelly. Kelly is a renter of 15 years, and before I can even finish my request, she just says, no, nah, no, nah, that's definitely not okay with me. I explain that my deck is growing things and her response is just, well, decks get dirty, that's just how it goes. She's simply aghast that I would ask this inconvenience of her. She'd have to move her furniture, unless the office explicitly gives me permission that she is not on board. So come Monday morning, I head right to the office. Apparently, Kelly is a known annoyance and the property manager and HOA board president are apologetic. Luckily, the board is on meeting tonight and they can draft a policy on deck washing. A week later, I get an email that Kelly has lobbied a member of the board and as a result, power washing of decks is not allowed. Apparently, some neighbors dislike the sludge that drips down as a result. But good news, I can wash my deck the old fashioned way with a scrub brush, garden hose, and soap. Cue malicious compliance. What would have taken 15 minutes of power washing turns into an entire day of scrubbing. I mix a homemade, eco-friendly deck wash that needs to be scrubbed on, left to sit for 15 minutes, and then rinsed off. Due to the level of grossness, it took many, many applications, and disgusting green suds are flying everywhere. Kelly is fuming. She did not realize that soap would be a part of the deal when I informed her of my new washing plans. I guess she thought she had successfully limited me to just a garden hose. She is very upset that there are suds on her windows and door. Threats of reporting me to the board ensue. Patio doors are slammed. Angry texts are sent. On my way to work Monday, I popped my head into the office. They had received complaints from Kelly and told her that I had permission for everything. Haha. <laughs> I have not heard from her since. Good news and bad news updates from OP. Well, sadly for anyone hoping for continued Kelly drama, the whole thing was so frustrating I actually just ended up covering my deck in plastic IKEA deck tiles that can be mopped clean and washed in the tub and stored over the winter. I just didn't feel like having a fight every spring over this. Well, I take my spite in smaller doses. Two groups of sparrows keep building their nest on poles on my deck and they keep falling down. I sweep up all the sticks and gosh darn it, so many of them just happen to fall down through the slats onto Kelly's deck. <laughs> what a shame. HOA Towing Help, posted by Winter Dandelions. In my condo complex as a homeowner in Florida, I parked my car in a lot on the property by the pool alongside about eight other cars around 9 p.m. at night. I have multiple cars, so two were in my driveway and I needed an extra spot for the car for a few days. Ten days later. My car is missing. I call the HOA and they said they had it towed for overnight parking in a pool area. 
I was confused because many cars park there overnight and there's nothing in the bylaws against that. I called the towing company and they said the same thing. I said there was no rule and they said that they would call me back. They then said they remembered that my car was actually towed because it was considered an abandoned vehicle for having all four tires flat. I then stated, how would I have driven it into the spot in that case? The towing company then hung up and called me back, saying only one tire was flat and the HOA declared it abandoned. I had to pay $575 to get it back and they stated that they would email me with my receipt with photo evidence of my tire being flat. It was not flat when I left it there. The towing company did not send me any receipt or photo and will hang up when I try to call them. My HOA will not reimburse me and my credit card company cannot help since I don't have the receipt. The credit card transaction is not a receipt legally. The cops can't help since they consider it a civil matter. Do I have a case for small claims? In the bylaws, it states the common area may be enjoyed by all HOA members and guests, and there is nothing about abandoned vehicles stated. Also to add the icing on top, three months after this incident, they placed signs all around the parking lot saying no overnight parking, which makes me think they knew what they did was wrong. Please help. The advice, if you go to small claims, sue both the HOA and the towing company in the same suit and let the court figure out who owes you the money back. Best advice here, pit them off against each other by suing them both. No rule and shifting explanation, you should sue everyone involved. Yeah, OP, that leaves it out of your hands and in theirs and hopefully they will do what's right. Good luck. Scary and weird experiences with neighbor posted by Cat B. Just looking to get some opinions and advice as to what to do to stop this situation from potentially escalating before it does. I live in a large city in a pretty big apartment building with 30 plus floors and tons of units. We have a lobby with very friendly doormen who monitor traffic in and out and beyond some weird and frightening experiences with the titular neighbor, love the experience of living in this building. My boyfriend and I moved into our current apartment about four months ago, and pretty early on, I was alone waiting for the elevator one morning when I hear the very sound of one of the doors opening a little bit. I turn my head, and I see our across-the-hall neighbor just barely peeking his head out from the cracked door. I assume he must have seen me see him because he ducked back in and immediately shut the door. It just immediately gave me the creeps. I can't really describe it. It wasn't like it was his whole head or anything, and his door wasn't open wide enough to actually be able to do anything besides just watch me. I brushed that off, and I went about my day and chalked it up to him just being nosy. Shortly after that, my boyfriend and I started noticing yelling from our neighbor's apartment at all hours of the day. It almost sounded like he was talking on the phone with someone and getting really, really angry at them. Based on the language he used, it sounded like he was yelling at a woman, but I've never seen anyone else come out of that apartment, and I never heard another voice besides his in these arguments. Again, not sure if he was even arguing with someone or just yelling for the heck of it. About two weeks ago, things escalated in a pretty dramatic way. Now, disclaimer, this incident is not confirmed to be the same neighbor, but for reasons I'll go into later myself and my boyfriend think it is. It was Saturday night, around 3 a.m., and myself and my boyfriend were completely asleep. I was awoken to the sound of what I thought was our TV falling over and breaking, or possibly a window breaking, just some incredibly loud noise. I woke up my boyfriend and he went to have a look around, but didn't find anything. He was heading back to bed when the sound happened again. This time, it was obvious where it was coming from. The front door. The door to this apartment is heavy, made entirely of very thick metal, and it was shaking in the frame as what we could only assume to be a large person took a few steps back and threw their weight into it. This happened over and over again, with the door actually moving in its frame with each blow. At that moment, we were truly terrified that someone was trying to break in. My boyfriend rushed to keep the door shut and told me to call the police, which I did. He told me he could feel the door buckling each time this person slammed on it. Within about a minute of the police arriving, the person stopped. When the police showed up, they told us that someone else on the floor had also called to report this same thing happening, but they searched every floor and told us that there was no one suspicious. 
They also said a doorman was in the lobby all night and no one entered or exited the building who wasn't a resident. They left and we were still very shaken up so we sat in the living room for about an hour before trying to sleep again. During this time, we heard the neighbor go in and out of his apartment a couple times, bringing up a doorman once to tell him that his lock was broken. Seems weird to me to figure this out at 4 in the morning, but maybe it isn't. My theory is that he was so turned around for some reason that he thought our apartment or someone else's apartment on our floor was his. He couldn't get in and then he thought that his lock was broken because of it. The next morning we spoke to a doorman and he all but confirmed this theory, though he did seem like he knew more than he was letting on and didn't want to single out this neighbor, rather letting us share what we knew first. He also told us to always call the desk before the police, which seems stupid to me given how aggressively this person was trying to get in. A couple of weeks go by without incident, and then yesterday, we were coming back home to find our neighbor charging his phone in the hallway near our door. No one else on the floor has ever done this, and there were no notices of electrical outages in the building. Generally, the property managers are very good about sharing information if any electrical outage or other building issue is taking place. My first thought is that his electrical is shut off, but I have no idea, and really, that's none of my business, just putting it in here in case it's relevant. The real update from yesterday is that he was, again, watching us as we waited for the elevator. I saw him before my boyfriend did, and he closed the door very quickly. The only difference between this time and last time is I heard him make a ton of noise trying to get the door open only to peek his head out and watch. I'm just, I'm just creeped out and I don't like going into the hallways on my own anymore. I love this apartment otherwise, like I said, just need some advice. This commenter asked OP, are there any security cameras in the common areas? I can't imagine a building would have a doorman but no cameras. And OP says, they told us there are no cameras in the hallway. My boyfriend was too focused on holding the door to get a good look through the peephole either, unfortunately. The cameras in the lobby showed no suspicious activity. Someone else says, My neighbor has an adult grandson who behaves oddly, and sometimes in frightening ways. He is schizophrenic. After trying to understand the condition, it seems the behavior does not mean they are violent human beings, but stuck in a personal heck in their mind. Maybe the doorman is aware? Just giving the possibility. But please always ensure your own safety. I agree with the commenters, get a peephole camera and let the authorities know. This story has an update. It's called, 99% likely that my mom stole $200,000 inheritance from me. I might have to contact a lawyer, but I still feel terrible, even though this is her own dang fault, posted by Please Insert Disc 2. My dad died 10 years ago. My mom, for the longest time, has always wanted help. There was a time when I had two jobs, no car, and I was a full-time student and I was going to get a haircut and my mom approached me and said, really, you're supposed to be using that money to help me. She's claimed my dad ruined our credit. Last year, she claimed that dad borrowed $10,000 from my aunt, so she needs help with the money since she has to pay my aunt 10 grand back. I gave her 600 or 700 bucks of my unemployment money and later on, I find out that she's had her own dang unemployment money. A few weeks ago though, she changed her story to, I have to pay back aunt 10 grand a year. At that point, I realized, okay, 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 she's a liar, a huge one. So I go and I check the files cabinet in our house. And what do I find? A trust with like $600,000 in it and a paper that states that I am a beneficiary of $200,000 of my dad's life insurance. I was supposed to receive that money eight years ago when I turned 18. I called the insurance company and they said that they received forms that I supposedly signed and sent in and they sent out a check and that they're going to see if it was cashed in or not. But let's be real, who submits forms to receive a check and hides it for eight years? She obviously cashed it. Whether she placed it into a trust fund or not, I don't know. I feel like that she robbed me of a much much, much easier life. I wouldn't have had to work minimum wage, for instance. I could have focused on school. I could have gotten a car that wasn't holding on for dear life. I could have maintained my dental, mental, and etc. health. So many things. 
but I still feel guilty that I'm going to be cornering her most likely tomorrow and asking her to fork up that money, otherwise I'll take it to the courts. Part of me feels like that I'm just being a spoiled child, but that's my money. I saw the papers. My dad meant for that money to go to me. She can't even claim that she used that money to help me. Why do I still have student loans? The update. Basically, it took me a very, very long time to finally accept that nothing I say and do will get through to my mom's head and ego. It was just a year and a half of her attempting to negotiate with me, manipulate, confuse, and isolate me, and so on. I had to go through months of therapy and do lots of introspection and remembering and analyzing my past to really come to this conclusion. I really couldn't believe how weak-minded I was last year. I started talking to a lawyer last month and that lawyer mailed a demand letter to my mother. I ended up leaving the house before my mom opened it, as in gathered my essentials and stayed with a friend. My mom hired her own defense attorney immediately. The defense attorney already offered to settle from the get-go, and I'll be hearing that first settlement offer tomorrow. I've been waiting to hear it for nearly two weeks now. But I'm sure it'll be an extremely lowball offer, and this will be dragged out as much as humanly possible. However, we requested the journal entry from the notary that allowed all this to happen, and hopefully the notary's journal and their reply will be all that we need to permanently have the upper hand here. But, just for my own sake, I need to prepare for the worst. I'm currently couch surfing, living with certain friends on some days and certain friends on other days. I have some job interviews in this upcoming week and school resumes in the next couple of weeks, so I'll be thoroughly distracted but also insanely stressed. Meanwhile, my mother is on vacation for the next three weeks, and I just have to remind myself that this is temporary and that I'm paying my lawyer on a contingency fee and she is paying her lawyer probably by the hour. Plus, doesn't it usually get far worse before it gets better, finally? Someone please tell me yes. This comment says, I'd get the lawyer to put a lien on your mother's property as she owes you money but's not paying the debt. This would stop her from selling the property until she pays everything that you're legally owed and frees her dang spending. No P says, I don't think we've really gotten to that point where we're trying to figure out where all her money is yet. She immediately offered to settle and then for some reason stated via her lawyer that she needed two weeks to come up with the said offer. That first offer will be known to me tomorrow, and I'm absolutely dreading it, and that part you're talking about might come in later if she claims that she cannot pay our counteroffer, which she better not. I already know she has at least 260 grand put away in her own life insurance, and she has at least 300 k in her own personal account, plus the account with my inheritance in it. I mean, if need be, we'll do what we can to find out how much money she has. Hopefully any other updates from OP are positive, and they come out the deserved winner like they should be. Become the HOA president and uncover a very shady situation. So I've lived in our neighborhood for 10 years. Didn't pay attention to the HOA for most of that time. Now we have kids and we're disappointed with the condition of the common areas. I attended a meeting and ran for the board seat and became the president in October 2020. I began digging and uncovered a very suspicious arrangement. The previous president had served for 14 years. She's the current VP. In 2010, she hired her spouse as operations manager. That operations manager, he gets paid $1,600 a month, roughly 20% of our association's revenue. Now this expense and arrangement had never been disclosed to the community from everything that I've seen. The annual audit does not detail it, the quarterly treasurer's reports don't detail it, and when directly asked to give a verbal breakdown of monthly expenses during a meeting, the HOA press somehow forgot to include her husband's paycheck, the largest monthly expense. Now I've been able to access bank statements going back to 2015 and there are monthly payments of at least 1600 bucks going back to that time. There's also a period that they paid their daughter 200 a month for social media management. Our bylaws require the president and the treasurer sign every check. This has not been adhered to. The former president signs every check herself. When I tried to delegate a task to our operations manager, I was told it was not in his contract. I began requesting said contract over the course of the next three months. I was told that they'd get it to me, but they did not until yesterday. I was finally given the contract. It was in a manila envelope with a sticker reading confidential across the front. (laughs) What? So each page has a confidential sticker also on the top. I was told this is the original and I'd have to return it. (laughs) Now, 
it gets weirder. The effective date on the contract is September 2020, one month before I was elected. I don't have any proof at the moment, but I find it very hard to believe this contract existed before I started asking for it. The contract was signed by the operations manager and the three previous board members, two of which are still current members. There's no dates listed with the signatures. Now as a side note, the former president and previous board members, they're close. A Golden Girls type of situation. The term of the contract is for three years and can only be canceled by a unanimous decision by the board. Our bylaws state that a simple majority of the board can make any decision. I have access to the HOA email and I found no record of the board approving this decision. I've not looked into previous meeting minutes to see if it was officially approved. I've just have a hunch that it wasn't, but a unanimous decision of the board can be made at any time. I've also not found any indication of a contract that predates the 921. This whole situation reeks and I'd very much like to end the contract and get rid of the board member. Any thoughts? Do you agree with this? The contract cannot override the bylaws. You need a majority of the board behind you to do anything, but this is clearly embezzlement. Yeah, this whole thing looks really shady. If you had a lawyer that could like detail and go in and check out every one of these points, then maybe that HOA would be shaking in their boots. What do you think? What would you do? I need a legal second opinion, posted by Evan was here. So I found an amazing house in Miami, but it's in a 10 home HOA and there is a legal issue. Background. There is currently a lack of new inventory in the Miami market. Either people are holding onto their homes waiting for the market to go up again, or they are listing at ridiculous prices, or the home they are listing is subpar. I found an amazing home that is a prime location, prime size, prime quality, and prime amenities. I have been looking for almost two years and visited over a hundred homes. So when I say that there has been nothing better in two years than this home, I mean it. I made an offer on the house and it was accepted. But during inspection, it was like pulling teeth getting the HOA bylaws and paperwork. There are two members of the HOA, President and Vice President. My seller happened to be the previous VP. My lawyer, who is amazing, found a huge issue. The HOA was created to pay for an electronic gate used to enter the 10 home block. The bylaws only specified that all the homes would pay $1,000 a year. This pays for gate maintenance plus yard work for all the homes. But last year, someone bought a home and their college aged son moved and threw parties every day. So all the homes decided that they wanted to create new bylaws about parties, approving people that move into the homes and a few others. Nothing crazy, all things that I can live with. The legal issue. Supposedly, they got all the homes to sign the new bylaws. But there is an issue. The lawyer for the HOA is the son of one of the homeowners. The new bylaws, according to my lawyer, are not legal. They added their bylaws to their current bylaws. But their original restrictive covenants don't allow this. They only allow bylaws that have to do with the gate, wall, and easement. So the new bylaws are not legal. According to my lawyer, they had to draft an amendment to the restrictive covenants not to the bylaws, which are then signed, witnessed, and notarized like a deed by every single homeowner so it can be properly recorded. It has to include the new restrictions for the community and confirm that 100% of the community owners, who will all sign, all agree that these restrictions are in place, even though they extend beyond and cover areas within the community other than the wall, easement area, and the entrance feature that the original restrictive covenants cover. We told this to the HOA lawyer, but he was dismissive and said that it didn't matter. That the HOA didn't have the knowledge or experience to know the difference. We explained that their bylaws aren't legal and he basically said that he didn't care. We were not his client. He then asked my lawyer if he wanted to do the work to write up the new covenants. The aftermath. My lawyer advised me not to purchase this house. If a lawsuit happened because of these bylaws, the entire HOA would be responsible for the legal cost and awards. He said it looks like an HOA that went rogue. This is killing me. This is my dream house. 
I'm unsure if the HOA members know that their lawyer and president is causing this legal issue for them. I tried to inform the seller's broker about the issue, but he doesn't seem to understand. I tried to request to tell the seller so she can push the other houses to fix this issue, but the broker is refusing to let me speak to her. I have spent way too much money on the inspection and the time on this and I should just walk away. But it seems like such an easy fix to make this legal. I mean, if everyone already agreed to the new bylaws, just agree to a new covenant. Ugh. So I'm coming here for a second opinion. How bad is the above and what should I do? Commenter says, I'd listen to the lawyer, and OP replies, I have been, but it's worth it to get a second opinion as well. I don't disagree, but I would take it from a lawyer, not random internet people. I thought the same plan, let me just buy the place and then fix this from the inside. But my lawyer said, what if the HOA president refused to do this? What if the board went rogue? You paid for a professional to give you a legal opinion, which they did, with the accompanying rationale. Listen to your lawyer, commenter says. Neighborhood Karen created her own HOA and fined me after I called her out. Now the fines keep coming. What can I do? Posted by Educational Brick 6186 I live in Baltimore City. About five years ago, a woman moved into my neighborhood. She started Facebook fundraising groups and quarter auctions to support her dying child, her at-risk pregnancy, her sick dog, and so on. She seemed like a typical scammer. Most people I know just ignored her. Fast forward to two years, she creates this group that she calls a wellness group, but she runs it like an HOA. She's besties with the city councilwoman, and she uses her friendship to have the city find people who question her. She also gets the trash men and the other city services to do special work for her, like they clean up her yard in the alley right behind her house. I made a comment on the Neighborhood Next Door page about her ruining the neighborhood. I pointed out how her wellness group shouldn't be representing all the residents because she created it herself and how she forced herself into the community association by threatening people. I also pointed out how the neighborhood is falling apart because no one wants to work with the community association since she joined and how the city finds homeowners because she complains to the councilwoman. In the last two years, a lot of the homeowners moved away because of her antics, and now those houses are Section 8 rentals. The city fined me twice since I posted those comments. I also found out she's the main moderator on Next Door now, and she deleted my comments. So I don't really have proof that I made them unless I can get Next Door to prove that she deleted it. The city fined me $50 for my trash can lid being open. It wasn't open. We have city-issued trash cans with attached lids. The only way the lid would be open is if the city fine inspector opened it before she took the picture. The city is supposed to put the pictures online, but their IT department has a glitch, so they can't upload them. They don't even have a picture of the alleged lid open, but they claim they will have it in court if I demand a hearing. The second fine is for high grass and weeds about two weeks after the first fine. My grass wasn't high. The city has the same excuse for why they don't have a picture uploaded. I talked to neighbors. Other people went through the same scenario. They complained about the Karen overstepping, then the city fined them. For background, none of us were fined before she started this. I have a week to pay off the first fine or request a hearing. I'm scared if I request a hearing, the city will increase the fine. Yesterday, I got a letter from Animal Control that my yard is unsanitary and I need to clean the dog waste immediately or I'll get another fine. I don't even have a dog. The whole scenario feels targeted toward anyone who complains about the neighborhood Karen. The city fined me a hundred bucks so far. How can I get out of this? This commenter says, escalate this to town administration, go to a town council meeting, reach out to the mayor, or even just, hey, lawyer up. HOA board campaign to do nothing, posted by Born Sandwich 176 I lived in a small 18-house neighborhood that had a deed-restricted HOA. We had a minimal common area along the main entry street that needed maintenance and some drainage infrastructure that needed to be maintained. Not much work had to be done at all. No one wanted to be on the board, so I ran for the board with the slogan, I will do nothing more than is legally required to fulfill the legal requirements of the HOA. This slogan was enough to get four more neighbors to run with the same slogan. 
We had the typical committees, all with the same members and the same idea. Leave everyone alone, fulfill our legal obligations, and move on. I was walking down the street one day, and I was accosted by a neighbor who said, You don't deserve to be president. I replied, Yeah, you're right, I don't deserve it. This really set her off, so she started yelling at me about all the things I should be doing, planting a specific kind of flower, forcing her neighbors to do things unregulated by the HOA, and so on. So, I invited her to run for president. I told her that she could submit a petition calling for a special election, and I could guarantee that everyone on the board would sign it and probably vote for her to take on the job. This, of course, just infuriated her. So, she started writing letters to the board, complaining about everything. We ignored the letters, which technically was a mistake. Our HOA documents required all letters to receive a response. She continued to send letters that had nothing to do with the HOA, so we crafted a malicious compliance response that read, Thank you for your letter to the HOA board. After careful consideration, we have decided to ignore it. We then included instructions on how to call for a special election to have us kicked off the board and promised her the support of all the board members if she chose to circulate the required petition. She sold her house and moved. Our board continued with the same philosophy for the 12 years that I lived there. Nothing more than legally required and leave everyone the heck alone. We would hold a homeowners meeting once a year, which was nothing more than a potluck dinner. We had to invite someone from the compliance company who worked for us to make sure we covered everything required for our annual meeting and reporting, and we would always have an agenda item under new business. Does everyone promise to be a reasonable adult? I've moved to a new 14-house neighborhood with an HOA. I haven't yet decided if I'll run for the board. Entitled Neighbors Acting Like Karens, posted by Cupid Fox. So recently, our neighbors got a baby. To be fair, I didn't know our neighbor was pregnant. We barely saw her and her kids and boyfriend, so it really came to me as a surprise. It's all good and fun when you have a baby, but the literal disrespect and entitlement is what puts a bad taste in my mouth. For instance, Ken, Karen's boyfriend, would come out to yell at my younger brothers, aged 9 and 6, to keep it down. Not say it in a nice calm tone or anything, straight up yelling at them. Another time, my mother overheard Karen ranting to her mother about how noisy my brothers were, to which my mom interfered and gave Karen a piece of her mind, and I was just standing there enjoying the show. Karen said, You know we have a baby. It needs to be quiet, otherwise our baby won't be able to sleep. Be considerate of others and don't act selfish. My mom said, Consider it selfish. You have the stroller in the way towards the basement. I have to push it aside to access it to get my bike out of it every time. You place the bikes you don't use in the bike parking spot despite others who use their bikes needing these spots because some of them have chain locks and they won't be able to lock their bikes safely because you occupy them and you clearly see that our bikes are in the basement which, by the way, we use daily yet you push our bikes aside from their spots just to place your crap there. You don't live alone in this house. Other people do live here too. We haven't said anything, and we have to be considerate of you. What about us? You act like you own this house, and just because you have a baby, you can do whatever you want. She replies, I'll talk to the landlord about your awful behavior. Just you wait. Typical Karen behavior, honestly. My mom and I went to buy groceries after that. We then walked inside, and my mom said jokingly, OP, don't be so noisy. The baby won't be able to sleep if you walk upstairs so loudly. I had to chuckle as we heard Karen yell. If you have to say something, say it to my face. To which my mom replied, I was talking to my son, not to you. And finally, this happened last week. My brothers went upstairs as they came from school, and suddenly, Ken came out and yelled, Can you shut the heck up? My mom, like the boss she is, responded with, how about you shut the heck up? You're being the loudest here right now. To which Ken replied with, Why don't you get down here then? My mom scoffed, telling him that she didn't stoop that low to his level and that he should shut the heck up. He did eventually shut the door. And for some reason, he always has to yell at my siblings when he believes my parents or I aren't around. Joke's on them, though. We don't let these entitled neighbors get their way. They want to be petty? Fine, so are we two can play at this game. I have lived nearly my entire life in this building. I witness neighborly drama all the time. 
and yet never ever had they taken our family down. It's funny because that family makes themselves the entire neighborhood's enemy. Amazon Theft posted by C Cantaloupe 8749 So my neighbor is a total piece of crap. Him and his wife live two floors above me on the opposite side of the stairs, which means they have a different doorway to go in. I got a package delivered about three weeks ago with a few floral button-down Hawaiian shirts and a black paper towel holder. It was put at their side of the building instead of mine, which it happens sometimes and it's never a big deal. People just leave it out there if it's not their stuff. However, when I got home, the package wasn't there. So I know most people in that side of the building and I asked everyone around where it was and no one knew or had seen it. Now my girlfriend and I went to a small party that the guy upstairs over there was holding for his wife. Now, I don't know them that well, but we're friendly and we chat with each other a few times a week. When I walked into their apartment, he greeted us at the door and he was wearing the one orange shirt that I ordered. I was in shock when I saw it and I whispered to my girlfriend, hey, that was my shirt. She just thought it was a coincidence. And then I walked over into the kitchen and sure enough, there sat my paper towel holder right there on their counter, holding some paper towels. I was mad at this point and I confronted him the next day because I didn't want to wreck the party. He claimed that he had had that shirt for years and the paper towel holder was just something he picked up in Walmart the other day. I call bullcrap the audacity of this man to lie about not knowing where my package is and then wear the dang shirt right in front of me. It's unbelievable. He knew I was coming because he's the one that invited me. I'm just very ticked off. I don't really care about the items. I got my money back and I ordered everything again. It was like 45 bucks in total. It's just the principle. This comment gives an answer. It says wear your shirts every chance you get and then point out how it's so amazing that he has all the same shirts that were misdelivered, especially in front of the other neighbors and especially if you're both wearing them. They won't believe his bull crap. An update from OP says he doesn't acknowledge me when we pass each other anymore since my confrontation. What an idiot. I've never been anything but nice to this jerk, so if he wants a war, he's got one. Next week, our complex has a community day, and I remember him saying that he is going to have a yard sale table. So I signed up for a table, and I requested the one right next to his. I'm going to wear that same orange shirt and see what goes down. I'm part of an HOA, and management is refusing to review security footage to see who destroyed my Halloween decor. I live in Chicago, Illinois, and I moved into a condo with an HOA back in June. Nothing egregious has happened so far, until now. I pay my dues and keep my head down, and I say hi to the neighbors when I pass them in the halls, but I rarely see other people in this building. A couple of weeks ago, I put up Halloween decor on my door. It's just three things that stick only to my door a pair of monster eyes, cobwebs, and a string of battery-operated copper LEDs. None of it sticks out into the hallway or anything like that. I put them up in early September, and there were no issues for the longest time. Yesterday, October 5th, I came home around noon after spending the previous night at my boyfriend's. Door decorations were all still intact. My boyfriend then comes to my place at 7 p.m. the same day and showed me that my lights are missing. Everything else on my door was still intact. My monster eyes and cobwebs were still on my door, only the lights were missing. My setup was that the batteries with the on and the off switch were taped to the inside of my door and the lights extended to the outside of the door from within, meaning a small portion of the lights is between the door and the door frame. My thinking was, was that someone cut the lights purposely with wire cutters because these were copper LED lights and rather difficult to snap by hand. However, my boyfriend did show me that it's also possible that the copper string snapped after repeated assault by bending it back and forth and that it was possible that the portion that sticks out of the door frame was repeatedly assaulted by my door and door frame, causing it to snap. However, I argued that even if it did snap on its own, the lights still hung on the cobwebs, so theoretically, the rest of the lights should still be on my door, just unblinking because the wire connection was broken, but the lights are just all gone. 
My condo unit has a security camera directly in front of it, so I reached out to my building manager to ask him to review the tapes during the time frame that it might have happened, which was October the 5th from 12 noon to 7 p.m. And I was told that they only review tapes if it affected the association as a whole. So basically, I'm boned because I'm only part of the association. It's so upsetting because I never got any complaints about my Halloween decor. I want to know what happened and if it was purposeful destruction and I want to know what options I have against the perpetrator. But that's not even possible without security footage review. I'm going to take down the rest of my decor so that it doesn't get further damaged. The lights aren't very expensive, so the loss itself isn't the problem. It's the fact that I have to live in the same building with someone who might have purposely done this that really bothers me. It's just so pointlessly hostile. This says that vandalism is a crime and that the HOA could have a legal obligation to review the footage or the security. What would have you done? This one's got a follow-up post. It's called, Would I be the butt for reporting an HOA member to the board for yelling at my friend about a mailbox color violation on my property? Posted by Steve at Steve. I'm 19-year-old Mel and Mom live in an HOA community that dictates the color of the mailboxes. They must be black. I recently had to put a new one in after the door broke off of our old one. While I did not know about the rule and I put in a white mailbox. Fast forward to this afternoon. A retired man who lives in the neighborhood recently volunteered to help the board enforce violations. He does a drive every few weeks to check up on houses. Well, today he went down my street as my friend, also 19 Mel, pulled in the drive to work with me in my basement. He texts me that he is here. Before he made it up to my door, the friend told me the HOA dude walks up to him and starts to ask him questions, says he is in direct violation of an HOA code. My friend tells him he does not live there and the HOA dude doesn't buy it. It's been a few minutes now, so I assume that I forgot to unlock the door and he's stuck outside. When I open the door, I hear HOA dude pulling the do you know who I am card. He's raising his voice when I butt in, also not knowing much about him. He goes off about the mailbox to me and how it's making the neighborhood look bad. I told him well, I'm unaware of it and I will talk to my mom about painting it when she gets off work. His tone shifted. He legitimately thought two 19-year-old kids owned a $300,000 house, had no idea that my mom owned it. Things then go full bonkers mode. Dude started to cover his tracks to me, saying that my friend was the one with the attitude and sarcastically answering questions and was full of crap. In reality, my friend was confused on why some dude approached him talking about a mailbox. He calls us violators and leaves, and we both just laughed. I asked my mom on what to do, and she said it's up to me since I'm an adult now. I'm leaning towards reporting the guy due to his condescending tone, unprofessional behavior, and raising his voice at my friend who is genuinely just very confused about what's going on. I don't even think he knows what an HOA is. My friend and I joked about it once he left, but still, I don't want another person in our neighborhood to get yelled at like that. I wish one of us had taken a video to show his evidence of behavior. Most of the board is actually quite reasonable, so I could see him getting kicked out if I do report him. Would I be the butt for reporting his behavior? I did end up sending an email to the HOA and they informed me that he is facing disciplinary actions, whatever that means. My main concern was the HOA volunteer letting the power get to his head and yelling at other younger people in the neighborhood. Also, I did paint the mailbox in order to comply. He shouldn't have been a jerk, nice job on reporting him OP, and I hope that he leaves you alone and gets in trouble or whatever has to happen. You know what they say about assuming, right? Sue me for that hundred, dare you, posted by John Poker Clan. This is a while back in the mid 90s. I owned a condo in Las Vegas. I bought it new and I lived in it. I don't recall how long ago I had lived there when I received a letter from the HOA asking me for my address. I just ignored it. A few weeks or so later, I received a letter stating that I had been fined $100 for not returning that other letter. I went down to the office to visit the HOA president, and I said exactly this to him. The only way I will pay this fine is through judgment, because I want to see you explain to a judge how you sending a letter to my address to verify my address and then fining me because you did not receive a response is going to fly with a judge. 
The reaction was priceless. He thought for a minute, and then he conversed with the other person there, which is probably an HOA board member maybe, I don't know. And then he said to her, could we have misplaced his letter? Okay, no, fine. His reply was simply disjointed. I never said I did not send the letter. I simply said I was not paying the fine without judgment in small claims. He was just pulling BS. Great comment and reply from OP. Comment says, what kind of idiot writes a letter to you asking for your address? Probably the same kind of idiot that texts you asking for your phone number or emails you asking for your email address. True story, got a letter from Bank of America saying they were closing my credit card because they didn't have my address on file. And OP says, your reply reminded me of a little joke we played on a desk clerk at a sleepy hotel and casino that I was shift manager at. My buddy, the security guard, went up to a room and called down to the desk complaining about the phone in the room that it was not working. It was at least a half an hour before the look of clarity came across her face. How to Kill an HOA, posted by Fred King 1313 Okay, so here's what's up. Me and my wife have been getting harassed by a new HOA to join, as my house is the lone holdout on a beachfront strip. Short and sweet. I write this today because my friends and I have discovered the two-step process to kill an annoying HOA. With my highly evolved ape brain, I have spent the weekend scouring the laws and the legal loopholes and have found through a series of quantum calculations that will only make sense to me. I have found the means to kill the HOA anywhere. Step 1. Organize your community and friends at the next meeting. Have someone or yourself call for no confidence and vote to remove all HOA board members. Vote in new members. Step 2. Have a new president. Vote to overturn all standing fines. And then end meeting with a vote to dissolve the HOA entirely. Any properties owned by the HOA are to be sold to pay off any debts owed by the HOA. Record everything and then turn a copy of the video into the governing body where you live as proof. Two steps to much success and a happier life. Nice work, OP. Solar panels don't match the aesthetic of the neighborhood, posted by MomCat859. Admittedly, our HOA is pretty good. The fees aren't that high for houses, less than 30 bucks per month, and a little higher for the condos. The pool is pretty decent and not that far away. We decided to put solar panels on our house. The HOA told me that we were not allowed to do that, and we asked why. They said it would ruin the aesthetic of the neighborhood. The solar panel company told us that that was illegal. They have a legal department that has to argue with HOAs all the time. It took two months before we finally got the okay to put the solar panels in. I just wonder, is it just a power trip for the HOAs that they have to make you jump through hoops to go a little greener? Shaking my head. That's what HOAs do. They try to prey on people who don't know the rules, but when you do, you take them down. You should follow your own rules, posted by Jake Senpai. Anyway, so when I was two, my dad bought the house that I grew up in. It was a major fixer upper. In total, he probably put a hundred grand into fixing it up, if not more. So this is where the story comes in. The city building inspector informed my dad that because it was documented that he spent over $50,000 improving his property, he would have to build a sidewalk, but only in front of his house. The expense would come out of his pocket. If anyone injured themselves on the sidewalk that abruptly started and abruptly ended, he'd be responsible for that as well, along with upkeep. It would also cut about three feet into the front yard and would permanently lower the property value. Now at the time that this happened, the city had completely renovated a park playground costing well over the $50,000, and this was public knowledge. Also, the park was within viewing distance of our house, and it had two historic trees within feet of the road. My dad wrote a letter to the mayor's office, and worded the cover letter in a way such that they would have to publicly read the entire letter out loud during a public meeting. The letter basically said to lead by example and put in a sidewalk at the newly renovated park, meaning they'd have to cut down the two historic trees. The public was outraged. After that, the building inspector basically let him renovate the house however he liked, and there is still no sidewalk. I love this malicious compliance. They need to follow their own rules and set their own example. Get a man. 
issues a fine without warning for street parking and having a memorial service with updates from OP, posted by Zethier99. We just moved into a non-gated HOA community in Florida. We had also moved my mother in with us to take care of her. Unfortunately, she passed the next week. Fast forward a week and we have a few family members over for a small memorial service. Next week, we get a letter from the HOA lawyer, who is also the president's nephew. It states, we were being fined $400 by the lawyer for him sending us the certified letter. The letter stated, even though the county owns the roads, we disturbed the HOA president by having people park on the street. I've searched our CNRs and they do say no long-term street parking, but the HOA has been sued in the past over parking and lost. Not sure what to do. Thinking about making a bar complaint about the lawyer's actions and not giving us the required HOA board hearing for our violation. Beyond that, I'm not sure what to do. HOAs suck and I'm stupid for buying into an HOA community. Commenter asked OP, if they are public streets, then anyone can park there. And where do they come up with 400 bucks? And it's for disturbing the HOA president? Are they more special than anyone else? I don't think on so many levels. And OP replies, 400 was for the attorney's time to send me the letter. I asked about a hearing with the board and was told it's a civil issue and there would be no hearing. I'll see if I can post the letter later today. I'm going to post the letter in emails when I redact some personal info. Sheriff stated they own the road enforcement and they have laws in our county about anyone else enforcing traffic and parking. The whole deal is a crap show. They lost a $30,000 legal battle last year, come to find out. Similar situation according to county documents. Funny they didn't learn the first time. With all the HOA stories I read on this channel, do they ever learn? Probably not. Lived in a high rise in Chicago that had an HOA full of old people with too much money. Fortunately, I was only renting, but I was curious to learn about the HOA and they were gracious enough to let me sit in. The condo had just built a brand new outdoor patio for grilling and so on. The powers that be didn't like the shade of red of the cobblestone brick that they laid for the area, so they allocated $1 million to redo the entire area with new brick. There were a few attendees who were young professionals who protested, but they were heavily outvoted by the contingent of wealthy old people who felt this was a justifiable use of funds. Outrageous. Psychnurse6685 says, They charged me $500 for leaving a glass cup on the barbecue. Dang, I was ticked. My blood boils just thinking about it. I have so many other horrible stories, like my wall was flooded inside and they refused to fix it, even though it was an HOA problem. I pay $617 monthly. Screw them. Stuff People Say says, was told to have 10 year old trees removed, which was apparently approved by the board. We found out, like all landscaping, because in the winter they turn brownish and lose the leaves. Also got a notice asking how long we'd have a Toyota Tundra truck in our driveway over Christmas. Our cousin stayed with us two nights. Nikodraw says, was moving to a different city and crashed at my dad's townhouse for a few months to save money for the move. One day, a guy showed up to install a satellite dish that my dad had ordered. My dad isn't the type of guy to pay very close attention to HOA rules and apparently missed a brand new and highly contentious rule that satellite dishes were eyesores and no longer allowed. So just as the installer guy is getting up to the roof, this couple, the head of the HOA, they come sprinting from their townhouse across the street to shut it down, screaming bloody murder. I had absolutely no issue with not getting a satellite dish. It wasn't even my house, but these two HOA thugs were absolutely awful. The wife was just hurling insults at the installer guy and I, and the husband immediately started climbing the ladder up onto the roof to kick the crap out of the installer guy. None of this was provoked at all. It just went from zero to 100 miles per hour in no time flat and this couple was out of control. Well, the installer guy eventually had enough of having racist insults hurled at him and he came down the ladder and started a full on brawl with the husband in my dad's driveway. 
the wife was screaming at the top of her lungs at me, a stone couch surfer whose only contribution to this whole fiasco was to answer a door and let a guy on the roof. I still vividly remember being absolutely dumbfounded, watching these two grown men beat the heck out of each other while I tried to communicate to my dad on the phone over the shrill sounds of some strange woman absolutely berating me for ruining the neighborhood. It was wild. Jeff Barge says, My dad was telling me a story about their HOA this week. A homeowner in their neighborhood had passed away and hadn't yet paid their HOA dues for the month. At the memorial service, the HOA president approached the mourning family and asked what their plans were for paying the back dues and for paying any dues until the house was sold. Simply amazing. Pigeon Shark says, My family has been part of one for maybe five or six years now, and they frickin' suck. We had to cut down a tree when we first moved in because its roots were cutting into the sewage pipes and backing up all of our drains. To do that, we had to get approved to cut it down, and that took a few weeks. So, we couldn't take a shower or flush a toilet for like two weeks. They also keep telling us to power wash our driveway, so we did once. We haven't done it again, but they think we did. They also keep raising the fees and giving no reason for it. I would expect that if they were adding things into the neighborhood or fixing something, but they just took out a few fountains from the lakes and they don't keep outside lights on anymore, so they should be saving money. Also, you can only paint your house certain colors, and I don't think you can use sidewalk chalk in the neighborhood either. But Loda Funk says, A friend of mine lives year-round in a luxury condo with a view of a popular ski slope. His buddy, a few doors down, is the HOA president. Just the two of them for the majority of the year. Nice and calm. Then, when ski season starts, hold on to your freaking hat. The East Coast millionaires don't shut the heck up with their complaints when they live there for three weeks. El Senor McQueenas says, My parents modified the front porch, and now it was different from the other houses in the block. Once it was done, a middle-aged lady comes out of nowhere. I had never seen her before, nor has she ever talked to us before, to kindly warn us that we had just lost the right to vote on HOA or some crap like that since we did an unauthorized modification. We replied with the equivalent of, okay, thanks. And once again, we haven't seen her ever since. It's like she crawled out of her lair to inform us that we lost a right that we didn't even use, as if it were a huge major offense. Screw that. Suze QP says, We have the HOA president from the Third Reich. This man is on such a power trip, you'd think he was running a massive gulag with the lives of a million peasants at his disposal. He protects even the most trivial information as if it were top secret intelligence and dispenses his own brand of justice with no regard for the actual rules. And he's a liar. At the last general HOA meeting, we sat for 40 solid minutes while he regaled us with this vague bullcrap stories about his years as a special forces officer in the United States Army. According to him, he's been shot twice, held for ransom in an undisclosed foreign heck hole, and awarded top secret military honors that he isn't allowed to talk about. Wait, what? Here's the thing though, he's maybe 5 foot 5, weighs at least 350 pounds, didn't know how to break down the gym weightlifting equipment, and made a complete butt of himself by saluting a neighbor who came to the meeting late still wearing his BDUs. The neighbor, who works at the nearby military base, laughed out loud and said, Dude, I'm an E4. Guess who got written up for leaving his garbage cans out? HOA Karen demands what I do on my property, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss the crazy fallout of this one, and I'll see you there.